Hey gang, welcome to my channel. I'm the Pony 314, and this here is a real classic. The most commercially successful handgun of the 20th century. This is a Smith & Wesson Model 10, previously known as the Military and Police, and before that, known as the Hand Ejector. And so, here are the basics. This is a six-shot, double or single-action revolver built on Smith & Wesson's K-frame. It has fixed sights, it's chambered in 38 special. Barrel length runs from 2 to 6 inches, but 4 inches, like this, is the most common. This was introduced in 1899 as the Hand Ejector, and was initially chambered in 38 Long Colt. And in that form, the U.S. military placed orders for a couple thousand of these that same year. So it was renamed the Smith & Wesson Military and Police. But the 38 Long Colt cartridge was shown to be pathetically underpowered during combat in the Philippines against hardcore native warriors, so Smith & Wesson upped the game and developed a more powerful round called 38 Smith & Wesson Special, or just plain old 38 Special, and began producing the M&P in this new round starting in 1902, calling it the Military and Police Second Model. A few minor changes to the grips, sights, and particularly in the lock work brought about the model of 1905, and with that, the Smith & Wesson military and police revolver was off to the races. It became hugely popular with all walks of life. Police began adopting it, civilians began purchasing it for self-defense or target shooting, and it even saw use as a supplementary sidearm by the U.S. military during World War I. It was exactly what most shooters would have wanted at the time. Simple, no frills, Anyone could learn to shoot this effectively, and it fired around that was, at that time, regarded as powerful enough for most situations. I mean, take a look at this thing. It has simple sights. The double action trigger pull is sweet and smooth. The ejector rod is held firmly in place by this lug under the barrel, and that's a feature that wasn't usually seen on Colt revolvers at that time. Simply put, there's just not a lot to this revolver, and that's just the way customers tended to like it. However, it was Colt, with their police positive, their official police, and their detective special revolvers that dominated the law enforcement market during the 20s and 30s. But the Smith & Wesson military and police did start cutting into Colt's action, so to speak. But what really seems to have been the catalyst for the dominance of the military and police was World War II when vast numbers of these were taken into military service. For one thing, the British Empire acquired about 590,000 of these through Lend-Lease starting in 1940, chambered in 38 Smith & Wesson, or 38-200 if you prefer, which was a standard round for British service revolvers. And the U.S. military, starting with the Navy, also placed huge orders for it as a supplementary wartime weapon and about 350,000 wound up serving with U.S. forces during World War II. These were favorites of U.S. Navy and Marine air crews. Military police sometimes carried them, as did rear echelon troops. And I think that female service members tended to be trained with it instead of the 1911. Or at least I've read that. But quite a few of these were used in combat by American forces, and wartime Smith & Wesson M&Ps were generally referred to as victory models. In fact, this revolver went on to see use in Korea, Vietnam, and beyond, so it had some decent staying power. So compare that to only about 70,000 Colt official police revolvers being acquired by the U.S. government during World War II. It seems obvious in retrospect which way the winds were starting to shift. So what do you say we call it for a minute so that we can get to the range and we can show you the Smith & Wesson Model 10 in action. We're out here at the Municipal Shooting Range in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico with the Smith & Wesson Model 10. We have our bleeding zombie clown a few yards downrange, and we're gonna put a few holes in it. And our first shoot is gonna be single action.
After World War II, more and more American police departments began retiring their Colt service revolvers in favor of Smith & Wessons, including, and maybe especially, the Model 10. Smith & Wesson designs were cheaper, but they were no less reliable. And in 1957, Smith & Wesson started assigning model numbers to its weapons, and so the military and police became the Model 10. It's carried that name ever since, but by any name, this saw use as a military and police revolver all over the world, as well as here in the U.S. I mean, everywhere in the English-speaking world, and it saw use in China, Japan, Turkey, Norway, Israel, Panama, and that's just to name a few. So, this revolver took on global significance. The high cap 9mm finally caused it to be retired as a police weapon in the late 80s, early 90s, right around there. But this remains a popular civilian weapon, and it's still in production today. That's right, in production since 1899, and with six million of these made, this became the most commercially successful handgun of the 20th century. The Smith & Wesson Model 10 more or less set the stage and the standard for 20th century revolver design. So, small wonder it became such a huge success. And I've had this one since, I think about 2007, and this is a 10-5, as well, you probably can't see it, but that's where it would say that. So this was made in 1962, and, well, as you can probably see, it definitely saw quite a bit of use before I ever got my hands on it, but it still shoots beautifully. So I think it's about time we head back to the range, but before we do, if you want to help keep this channel going, feel free to support us on Patreon. There is a link in the description. So... Let's get back to truth or consequences and do some more shooting with the Smith & Wesson Model 10. It's time for our second shoot with the Smith & Wesson Model 10, and we're going double action this time. Let's see what kind of hits we can get. And that was our episode on the Smith & Wesson Model 10. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and if you like what we do on this channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button. I'm the Pony 314, and I will see you at the range.